Hey everybody, it's me. Um, I made a video discussing this topic before. It's still on YouTube if you want to see it. But I decided I'm going to make an uploaded version for two reasons. One, I looked back at it. The quality is not as good as I thought it'd be. And second, I recently realized that there's more I could have covered on that topic. And that really bothered me once I noticed it. So I'm making an uploaded version of this video, and I hope I cover everything I want to. So this is a slideshow that I previously did for one of my classes. It's about quadratic equations, and specifically, how to solve them. So I'm pretty sure we're all familiar with what a quadratic equation is, right? AX squared plus BX plus C equals zero, where coefficients A, B, and C are all real numbers. So there are plenty of examples where quadratic equations are used in our lives. For example, they can be used in calculating room areas, figuring a profit, quadrags in athletics, and finding positions of moving objects. For example, in my first year of calculus, we had a position function, which was a quadratic. The derivative of that was a linear function that determined the velocity, and the derivative of that would determine the acceleration. There are four methods that we use to solve quadratic equations that I'm going to talk about in this video. These methods are graphing, factoring, completing the square, and the quadratic formula. First, let's talk about graphing. So the graph of a quadratic function is pretty straightforward. It's a symmetrical curve that goes up or down. It doesn't really matter. This particular graph is of the quadratic function x squared minus 5. Now one important thing to note here is when we solve quadratic equations, we have to set them equal to 0. Not specifically when x equals 0, but when the quadratic in terms of x equals 0. And it can be any variable you want, but I generally use x in these situations. And when you're graphing a quadratic, the solution can be found where the graph crosses the x-axis. Not the y-axis, the x-axis, the horizontal one. And you can see here that this graph crosses the x-axis at two places. In this case, they are when x equals the square root of 5 and the negative square root of 5. If the graph does not cross the x-axis, then there are no real solutions for it. So the second method I'm going to talk about when it comes to solving quadratic equations is factoring. What this means is we rewrite the quadratic equation as a product of linear factors, and then we set each factor equal to zero, and that's how we solve them. So I have a few examples here that will show what I mean. So the first one is straightforward. This is of the equation x squared minus 7x minus 44 equals 0. So before we start, I thought it would be a good idea to determine what coefficients a, b, and c are. Well, we can see here that because there's nothing in front of the x squared, a equals 1, then there's a minus 7x, so b equals negative 7, and then there's a minus 44, so c equals negative 44. So now we're going to find the factors of this by using a method known as FOILing. FOIL is an acronym which stands for first, outer, inner, and last. What this means is the product of the first of the linear factors will equal ax squared. The product of the outers plus the product of the inners together will equal bx. And the product of the last will equal c. So what we have to do is find two numbers that add up to negative 7 and multiply to negative 44. Are there two numbers that you could think of that fit those qualities? If you guess 4 and negative 11, you are correct. 4 plus negative 11 equals negative 7. And 4 times negative 11 
equals negative 44. So we can say that x squared minus 7x minus 44 can be rewritten as the factors x plus 4 times x minus 11. So before we continue, I thought it'd be a good idea to look back on this just to see if it works. So, the first, x times x equals x squared, so that's right. Outers, x times negative 11 equals negative 11x. Inners, 4 times x equals 4x, so we add them together. Negative 11x plus 4x equals negative 7x, so that works. And lastly, the last, 4 times negative 11 equals negative 44. So these two factors work. I just thought it'd be a good idea to look back on that to see if it works. Now we know that those two factors work, we set each one equal to 0. Because 0 times any number equals 0, and if one of them equals 0, that will work. So you can see here we just have some addition and subtraction. So all we have to do is add and subtract depending on which factor we have. And we have our two solutions of x equals negative 4 and x equals 11. Moving on to the next example. This one is of the equation x squared minus 49 equals 0. So we have an ax squared term and a c term, but no bx term. So we can rewrite this as x squared plus 0x minus 49 equals 0. So we can say that our a equals 1, our b equals 0, and our c equals negative 49. So like before, we're going to do this again. We're going to find two numbers that add up to 0 and multiply to negative 49. Now, this is a little easier than you might think, because if two numbers add up to 0, they just cancel each other. Like, for example, 1 and negative 1 add up to 0, so those cancel. So let's look at the negative 49. Or we could avoid the negative and just look at the 49. This is known as a difference of squares. So, 49 is a square, and x squared is a square. So what number, when squared, gives us 49? That's right, 7. So let's see. 7 plus negative 7, so that's 7 minus 7, equals 0. And 7 times negative 7 equals negative 49. So we can rewrite this equation with the factors x plus 7 times x minus 7. So like I said, this is a difference of two squares. So all you have to do is do a plus and minus of the square root of c when you have that kind of quadratic equation. And like before, we just set each factor equal to 0. And with a little addition and subtraction, we can get that our solutions are x equals negative 7 and x equals 7. Moving on to example 3. For this one, I chose the equation 4x squared plus 6x equals 0. So now we have a similar dilemma like before. We have two of the terms, but not the third. We have an ax squared term and a bx term, but no c term. So we can basically rewrite this to say 4x squared plus 6x plus 0 equals 0. It's important to know that we are just adding 0 because the original function did not have a c coefficient. So now we can determine what our coefficients are. So a equals 4, b equals 6, and c equals 0. So for this, we don't have to worry about the plus zero. Instead of fooling, we're going to use a different method. We're going to rely more on the GCF. That stands for the greatest common factor. The greatest common factor of a group of terms is the largest number that can multiply into all of these terms. 
So, we can look at the 4x squared plus 6x. Is there a number that multiplies into both terms? If you've guessed 2x, you are right. The reason being is because both terms have an x in them, and both the coefficients in those terms are even. So, we're going to leave a coefficient out of 2x, and on the inside of the parentheses we have 2x plus 3. So let's see if this works. 2x times 2x equals 4x squared, alright? 2x times positive 3 equals positive 6x. So yes, that works. So like before, all we have to do now is set each factor equal to 0. And with the 2x plus 3, we can just subtract 3 on both sides to get 2x equals negative 3. And since both are multiplied by 2, I just have to divide by 2, and we have our two solutions, x equals 0 and x equals negative 3 halves. Now we are on to our last example of factoring. And this one's going to be a bit of an interesting one. This one is of the equation 5x squared plus 13x minus 6 equals 0. So our a value we can see equals 5. Our b value equals 13. And our c value equals negative 6. Now this one's going to be a little more tricky than before because since there's a coefficient in front of the x squared, we can't just simply find two numbers that add to 13 and multiply negative 6. So we have to try a different method. The method we're going to use is of the acronym PATH. That stands for Product, Addition, and Factors. What this means is we are going to rewrite the BX term as a sum of two x terms. To find the coefficients of these two x terms, the product will be equal to the product of coefficients a and c, and addition means they will add up to coefficient b. So for our product ac, 5 times negative 6 equals negative 30, and b equals 13. So we're going to rewrite 13x as two terms of x where the coefficients multiply to negative 30 and add up to 13. Now let's avoid the negative part of the negative 30 for a second, and there are multiple factors that we can use that multiply to 30. There's 30 and 1, 15 and 2, 10 and 3, and 5 and 6. We can only use one pair of these, and I think I only see one that looks promising. That is 15 and 2. They do seem closely to 13, so let's try and use them. Now remember that a positive times a negative equals a negative. So one of these two is going to be negative, and one of them is going to be positive. But which is which? Let's see. Negative 15 and 2 will not work. They multiply negative 30, but add up to negative 13. We're looking for positive 13. Let's see if 15 and negative 2 work. Yes, they do. They multiply negative 30 and add up to 13. So we will use 15 and negative 2 to divide the 13x. So we will rewrite this equation to say 5x squared plus 15x minus 2x minus 6. And now, let's look at the two halves of our new equation separately. So we have 5x squared plus 15x. Like the previous example, we're going to rely on GCF for the factor. These two terms have a greatest common factor of 5x. So we'll factor out a 5x, and we get 5x times x plus 3. Let's see if this works. 5x times x equals 5x squared. 
5x times plus 3 equals plus 15x. So that works for this half. Now, let's move on to the other half. Negative 2x minus 6. Now, only one of those two terms has an x, so x will not be in the GCF. But, there is a GCF of negative 2, because both the coefficients are negative, and they're both even. So factoring out negative 2, we get negative 2 times x plus 3. Let's see if that works. Negative 2 times x is negative 2x. Negative 2 times positive 3 equals negative 6. So that works. Now, you will notice something about the two parts here. And that is that both parts have a factor of x plus 3 in them, which is what I was hoping for. So since they have a similar factor, all we have to do is add them up together and we'll have our two factors. So 5x minus 2 is just 5x minus 2. And we multiply all that by x plus 3. So our two factors for this equation are 5x minus 2 and x plus 3. Now, I hate to be a little redundant here, but just let's see if this works. 5x times x equals 5x squared. Check. 5x times plus 3 equals 15x. Outers, negative 2 times x equals negative 2x. Inners, add those up. 15x minus 2x equals 13x. Check. And negative 2 times positive 3 equals negative 6. So that works. Like before, we were going to set both factors equal to 0. And for the 5x minus 2, I will add 2 to both sides and get 5x equals 2. And all I have to do is divide by 5 and we get the answer for that. And subtracting 3 from both sides of the other factor, we get the other solution. So our two solutions to this equation are x equals 2 fifths and x equals negative 3. That covers factoring. The third method I'm going to talk about in this video is completing the square. Now on the surface that sounds a little confusing, so I'll try to explain this the best I can. So here's the first example. This will be of the equation x squared plus 6x equals 7. Now the way I found this out was to a little geometry. And what I mean by that is, the best way to show this out is to represent each term of the function as the area of a shape. For the x squared term, I will represent that as a square with a side length of x. Plus, for the 6x, I will represent that as a rectangle with one side length of 6 and another side length of x equals for the 7 on the right I'll represent that as a bigger rectangle with an area of 7 the dimensions are not given just the area is 7 now what I saw next was kind of interesting what happened was that the rectangle of 6x was divided in half down the side length of x just like so. So now it was in two rectangles, and those two new rectangles were distributed amongst the square, because they had a common side length of x. And since the rectangles were half of the old rectangle, that means they had a new side length of 3. And now you see here, we almost have a square. Now you notice that what's missing is this little area right here. And this area is a square that has a side length of 3. Since it's a square, we can just multiply. 3 times 3 equals 9. So this little orange square had a side length of 9. And whatever you do to one side, you do to the other side. So I added that area of 9 onto the other side. 
And this is what completing the square means. It means that we have one square and two even rectangles, and we redistribute it so that both sides have the area of a square. So, I did the same thing to the equation as well. I added 9 to both sides, and I got x squared plus 6x plus 9 equals 16. So the two rectangles on the right I redrew as a square with an area of 16. Now you'll notice that the square on the left equals the square on the right. Since they have an area of 16, and you'll notice that the square on the left shows a side length of x plus 3, we can rewrite this as x plus 3 all squared equals 16. So now all we have to do is square root both sides of the equation. So we get x plus 3 equals 4. This works when the square has a side length of 4. But there's another way we could do this. We could say that the square on the right has a side length of negative 4. Because a negative times a negative equals a positive. So negative 4 times negative 4 equals positive 16. So we can also say that x plus 3 equals negative 4. So it's important to take both the positive and the negative root because both will square to a positive number. So both options work. And now all we have to do is subtract 3 from both equations and we get our solutions of x equals 1 and x equals negative 7. Second example, this one is of the equation 3x squared plus 2x minus 4 equals 5. So not equals 0, so that's interesting. Now you notice that the previous equation had x squared plus x term on the left side, but no c. So let's add 4 to both sides and we get 3x squared plus 2x equals 9. And you'll notice that the coefficient in front of the x squared on the previous equation was 1. So, since the coefficient of this one is 3, we divide everything by 3. It's important to know that completing the square best works when the coefficient in front of the x squared is 1. So we divide everything by 3, and we get x squared plus 2 thirds x equals 3. Now let's do the same thing as before and represent each term as the area of a shape. The x squared will be represented by a square with a side length of x. Plus, the 2 thirds x will be represented by a rectangle with one side length of 2 thirds and another side length of x equals, and the 3 on the right side will be represented by a rectangle that has an area of 3. So now we'll take the term in the middle, like before, and divide it into two equal rectangles, and distribute them amongst the square. Since the new rectangles are half of the old rectangle, they have a new side length of one third. And once again, we almost have a square. All that's missing is this little area right here. So once again, we multiply the side lengths. One third times one third, simple multiplication, it's one times one divided by three times three, and that is one ninth. And whatever we do on the left side, we do to the right. So we add one ninth to the right side as well. Now, just to make this a little easier, I know that 1's a whole number, 1's a fraction, so I rewrote 3 as 27 ninths, because 27 divided by 9 is 3, and added the 1 ninth, and that gave us 28 ninths. So that's just to be clear. So I rewrote the equation to say x squared plus 2 thirds x plus 1 ninth equals 28 ninths. 
and that means that the square on the right has an area of 28 ninths. Now the two squares are equal to each other, and since the square on the left shows a side length of x plus one third, we can say that x plus one third all squared equals 28 ninths. So like before, we can take both the positive square root and the negative square root because both will square to be a positive. So I had to square root 28 ninths. The square root of 9 was simple, it's 3, but the square root of 28 was a little difficult. So I took the square root of 4 and multiplied by the square root of 7 because multiplying square roots does that. So I simplified the square root of 28 to equal 2 square roots of 7. So our two answers are plus and minus 2 square roots of 7 over 3. So I will say that x plus 1 third equals plus or minus 2 square roots of 7 over 3. And that is shown by the dimensions of the square. Now all I have to do is subtract 1 third from both sides. And we could stop there, but since both fractions have a denominator of 3, we can rewrite as one fraction, so it says x equals negative 1 plus or minus 2 square root of 7 all over 3. But, if you want to take it a step further, you can type that in a calculator to figure out what the actual answers are. And I did that, and I got negative 2.907 and 1.431 as my two solutions of x run into the nearest three decimal places. So that covers completing the square. So the last method I'm going to talk about is the quadratic formula. x equals negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. I know you guys have probably seen this in class and have no idea how we came to this formula. I will show some examples of solving quadratics with this formula and hopefully try to explain where it came from. So, my first example for this. For this, I will use the equation 3x squared plus 4x plus 5 equals 0. So, for this, we can determine that a equals 3, b equals 4, and c equals 5. So, all we have to do is plug these coefficients into the quadratic formula. So we had x equals negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 4 squared minus 4 times 3 times 5 all over 2 times 3. But that's a little messy, so let's simplify things a little bit. Negative 4, that's simplified. 4 squared equals 16. 4 times 3 times 5 equals 60. 16 minus 60 equals negative 44, and 2 times 3 equals 6. So you can simplify this to say that x equals negative 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 11 all over 3, because negative 44 equals 2 square roots of negative 11, and 4 6 can be simplified to 2 thirds. But there's one issue here, the square root of negative 11. Square roots of negative numbers do not exist because negatives times negatives always give positives. But there is a number we can use for that. Square root of negative 1 is i. So we can see our final solution is x equals negative 2 thirds plus or minus i times the square root of 11 over 3. So there is no real solution for this equation, just a complex one. My second example is going to be a little less difficult. This one is of the equation 2x squared plus 5x plus 1 equals 0. So we can say here that a equals 2, b equals 5, and c equals 1. And like before, we can just plug each coefficient into the quadratic formula. So we get x equals negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 5 squared minus 4 times 2 times 1 all over 2 times 2. So, let's see here. 
5 squared is 25. 4 times 2 times 1 is 8. 25 minus 8 equals 17. And 2 times 2 is 4. So we can simplify this to say that x equals negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 17 all over 4. But if you want to be more precise, we can say the two solutions are x is approximately negative 0.219 and x is approximately negative 2.281. These are the two actual solutions round to the nearest three decimal places. So that was the examples I wanted to show the quadratic formula. But one more thing I wanted to note was that many people, including myself at one point, had trouble understanding why that arrangement of the coefficients gave us our answer. Well, a little while ago I found out that completing the square could also be used to prove the quadratic formula. So we start with the equation ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. And like before, there was no c value on the left side, so we can subtract on both sides. So we have ax squared plus bx equals negative c. And like before, the coefficient from x squared was one, so we divide by a. So x squared plus b over ax equals negative c over a. And like before, we're going to represent each term as the area of a shape. x squared will be represented by a square with a side length of x. Plus, b over a, x, will be represented by a rectangle with a side length of b over a and another side length of x. Equals, and on the right we just have a rectangle with an area of negative c over a. And like before, we will divide the middle rectangle into two equal rectangles and distribute them amongst the square. So since it's half, we can now say that the two rectangles have a new side length of b over 2a. And like before, we almost have a square. All that's missing is this little area right here. So... We square b over 2a, since it's a square, and we get b squared over 4a squared. And we do the same thing on the right side. So we can say that x squared plus b over ax plus b squared over 4a squared equals negative c over a plus b squared over 4a squared. But that's a little difficult. How about we try rearranging the terms on the right side to equal one term? So, we see that 1 is a denominator a, 1 is a denominator 4a squared. So we take the negative c over a, and multiply it by 4a. So we get negative 4ac over 4a squared. And now we rewrite the whole thing as one term, and we get b squared minus 4ac over 4a squared. And that equals the area of the square on the right. And since the square on the left, equal to the square on the right, has a side length of x plus b over 2a, we can say that x plus b over 2a all squared equals b squared minus 4ac all over 4a squared. And like before, we're going to square root this, but we're going to take both the positive root and the negative root because both work. And now we can actually simplify the square root just as little. 4a squared is a perfect square, so we can say that this is plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, and that equals x plus b over 2a. And now you can see all we have to do is subtract b over 2a on both sides, and since both fractions have a common denominator, we are left with none other than the quadratic formula x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So there you have it. Those are the four ways of which we solve quadratic equations. While some methods might work better in some situations than others, 
It's important to know all of them, so that way you're not completely blind when you come across quadratic equations like this. So I hope you enjoyed these methods of solving quadratic equations and their algebraic, geometric, and graphing representations.